Um, our next contestant uh, is a finalist from the FameLab Germany 2014 competition. Um, she does her PhD at the Institute for Radio Pharmaceutical Cancer Research at the Helmholtz Center in uh, Dresden, Rosendorf. Uh, but emphasizing the international nature of the FameLab competition and, more importantly, of science and research, uh, she actually grew up in Spain and was a visiting student at Monash University in Melbourne. Um, all of this adds up to her trying to modify nanoparticles for targeted interaction with cancer cells and being passionate about communicating science to the public. So let's see if this also translates into another wonderful FameLab presentation as we hear from Karina Pombo Garcia. I'm very excited to be here today. I've seen this stage quite a few times lately on TV. Have you ever thought that 90% of the cancers are curable when we diagnose them on early stage? To put it another way, diagnosis of cancer is the best cure that we have at the moment. Well, this fact encourages people like me to find better tools to fight against cancer. Recently, many technologies have been developed Maybe you are already familiar with molecular imaging, PET MRI. These technologies are on their own not able to detect the cancer, but they need a signal coming from the patient. Well, so in our lab we had an idea. Why don't we develop one unique tool that once inside of the patient localizes the tumor that we can detect with all these different modalities of imaging? For that, let me introduce you to our baby in the lab, a multifunctional nanoparticle. This nanoparticle has a magnetic core that is itself an MRI agent. Then we cover them with a layer, what chemists call polymers, that allow, that allow us to transport the nanoparticles into the human bodies, but also to escape from the immune system. The immune system is like the police in our body. If he sees us, we have to run out. And we don't want that to happen. We want our nanoparticles to stick to where the tumor is located. Last but not least, we decorate these nanoparticles with different functionalities, which is a light that allows us to track the, cell, the tumor cells with a label, a radioactive label, to allow us to see the nanoparticles by a PET imaging and with a key that goes specifically to where the tumor cells are located without damaging healthy tissue. Now, imagine injecting these nanoparticles onto a patient and be able to detect them via the different scanners that we have available on the market right now. That can allow the doctors to, much more, so to quicker diagnose cancer and therefore improve people's lives. This is a very nice story that, believe me, I don't want to leave behind my laboratory bench. I really hope that these nanoparticles can make it to the clinics one day and therefore improve people's lives. Uh, thank you, Karina, for also showing that science communication can involve healthy snacks. <laughs> I'm sure we have some questions from our judges. Uh, Mary, do you want to start off this time? That was very impressive, thank you very much, and, and, and something that I think would make a great difference of treatment to, to uh, the, the public. Again, did you do any epidemiology with, with cancer patients before you undertook this, or did you just come straight in on the science? I, I come straight on, on the science, yeah. Um, there are many people looking at, at epidemiology, epidemiology studies on the group, but I'm um, the... Um, pure scientist, the uh, mice in the lab. <laughs> yes, I just want to understand how you, how you, where that goes. How do you get it in? It's uh, a normal injection, like you inject any other medicines on a patient. But the good part is, like with just one injection, you you can get access to different molecular imaging uh, scanners. So tests that we have at the moment to diagnose cancer. So one single proof carries enough uh, for functionalities to be detected by different scanners. Thank you That's, very much. yeah. Charles? Karina, lovely presentation. Thank you. So can I ask, I mean, sort of, one thing we increasingly recognize is that within a tumor, the 
the cancer cells on the periphery are very different to the cancer cells in the middle of the tumor yep. and they're both very different to cancer cells that have metastasized. Mm -hmm. So what are the implications of what you're doing on that heterogeneity? Yeah, so one of the most challenging parts is to develop a nanoparticle that is stable and still does the function that you want them to do on cancer cells because normally they, you work on more acetic pH. Let's see, it's like if you put salt and water, the nanoparticle still has to be stable. So that is a very challenging part. And also to, when you work with radioactive systems, it's like in the case of these nanoparticles, you really have to take care of the non-damaging healthy tissue. So I think that's the more challenging part of carrying this into the clinics. Uh, Karina, you did a brilliant job at uh uh, translating or describing a pretty complex uh, <laughs> uh, phenomenon, so thank you. Uh, this is a communication problem. At what point in your preparation did you decide to use a prop and why? <laughs> well, um, some friends that I have are scientists, but most of them are not. <laughs> So you have to encourage the public to understand your science because I think at least I just do science for improving people's life. So if they don't understand the science I do, for me it doesn't make sense anymore. Thank you very much, Karina.